the talk show. Good evening. Welcome to it. This is the talk shop with me, Master Chaba Mushweshwe, on SAFM, South Africa's news and information leader. Tonight, we talk about service delivery and how we can deal with this particular problem in our country by focusing on the lean management system. We'll be talking to Dr. Anton Grutter, who is from Lean Institute Africa. And then in our mentors feature tonight, we've got the Man Up campaign, and we're talking to Ntlantla Zweni, who is the founder of Dream World Leadership Academy and Nimrod Ngorsi, who is one of the speakers at the Man Up campaign, they'll be looking at uh, issues for men, about men, peculiar to men, issues like health, fatherhood, manhood, and leadership. And uh, what, and uh, they are calling on men to man up. We'll hear why men are being called to man up. And then in the second hour of the talk shop tonight, we talk about protecting our heritage with Dr. Mutobi Mudwate, who is the chairman of the Mudwate Arts Heritage trust he is currently in england and uh, he is talking about the need to commemorate the centennial sinking of the ss mendy off the isle of Wight in the english channel 95 years ago they've embarked on a tough five-year journey of rediscovery and reclamation of the ship we'll be hearing from dr mutobi mudwazi what exactly the mudwazi arts heritage trust is doing and also how we can remember these brave south africans Men. Don't forget African Affirmations coming your way, brought to you by the Iskia Institute as well. And we wrap up the show tonight by focusing on the ICT Indaba for 2012. We'll be talking to the spokesperson of the minister, uh, asking the question, where is South Africa in the Africa ICT race? That is the talk shop coming your way this evening with me, Masichaba Moshweshwe. Let's get right into it. The lean management system. What is it all about and how can it address the problem of the seemingly never-ending public service delivery protests? And joining us in the studio, Dr. Anton Gruter from Lean Institute Africa. Good evening to you, Dr. Gruter. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome onto the talk shop. Good evening. Thanks for inviting me. The lean management system is uh, an international system that uh, is uh, um, followed all over the world, and it's based on the Toyota. Correct. Uh, t- take us through that. Okay. So lean management came to the attention of the world when the results of an MIT study in the late 1980s showed that the Japanese car manufacturers, specifically Toyota, built much better cars in much less time and at much lower cost. So clearly they were doing something differently. So in 1996, the authors of the study, Jim Womack and Dan Jones, wrote a book called Lean Thinking in which the basic principles of this approach was articulated. And since then, the lean management has spread from industry into services like banks and then into healthcare. And now internationally, it's increasingly being applied in public service sector improvement. Maybe for some listeners who are familiar with this, uh, it's also known as TQM or Just In Time. They all have the same roots. Um, And the quickest way to explain what it's about is to quickly take you through the basic five principles Mm -hmm. of of lean thinking. So first of all, (coughs) you need to understand what's of value to the customer. Quick example, ambulance services. When you've had an accident, you want the ambulance to be there quickly. That's the main value that's been created for you. When you're an elderly patient, you want to be treated carefully, you don't want to be rushed, and so a different value is created for that, but you're still running an ambulance service. Not to interrupt you, but uh, you are using the example of the healthcare services at the moment because you've done extensive work um, with uh, the provincial hospitals, am I correct? Yes, I I must just say I'm not a government spokesperson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I speak on behalf of the Lean Institute, but I can give you some examples of the kind of work that has been done in in healthcare and in other government departments in South Africa. Okay, I want to talk about that specifically, but let's just quickly go through the principles. Um, We've spoken about the first one. You said that there are five. Right. Secondly, we focus on the process that creates value for that customer. And then anything that does not create value we regard as waste and we try and eliminate it. Quick example, in a government department, (coughs) we measured the team of people who worked with us in in the department. We measured how long it takes them to make phone calls, faxes, photocopies. And it turned out that to do that, it took them two thirds of the time just walking to the photocopier or to wait at the telephone to get the the code to get through to the call. 
So once you start measuring, you suddenly discover there's actually lots of waste that could be eliminated and make our work easier. The third principle <coughs> is to make the fl work flow through that process. Another quick example. In a government department servicing the public sector, the office of a senior official who had to sign off on applications was about 150 meters away from the officials who were helping the public to fill in those forms. So what they did is they grouped people in batches of six before they took them through to the senior person's office, which of course meant that the first person had to wait for the sixth person. What did they do? They moved the senior person's office to where the administrators were, and now they go straight through and much quicker service delivery. Then the next thing is to make what the customer wants or to service them when they want it and exactly what they want. So this morning, myself and my 77-year-old mother went to the traffic department to get our new driving licenses. Eight o'clock is the notice that says that time that they open up. We were told, we were standing outside, that they're still having a meeting. So that was definitely not the kind of thing that we would accept because the, the notice said 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, absolutely. And it's so easy to rearrange a meeting at a time when the customers are not going to be there. And then last but not least, we, we involve frontline staff in continuous improvement to try and strive for perfection. So it's very important that the, the frontline staff are the ones who actually learn how to make these improvements and in fact, small improvements by everybody through the organization over time can deliver much better results than a big bang approach. Dr. Anton Grutter from Lean Institute Africa joining us in the studio talking about the lean management system, which could be a possible solution to the challenges that we're facing with regards to public service delivery. We'll be taking your calls on 0891 104 0891 104 or SMS us on 34701. SMSs are charged at two rand in a short while. The Talk Show. This is the talk shop with me, Masachaba Mushweshwe, on SAFM 104 to 107. We are talking to Dr. Anton Gruter from Lean Institute Africa, and we are talking about the lean management system, which has been used by the Institute in uh, the uh, South African um, provincial hospitals, but also in some municipal offices as well. We're trying to talk about the challenges around public service delivery and how to deal with some of them, how we can overcome some of these challenges and Dr. Anton Gruter says that the lean management system is one possible answer. 0891 or SMS us on 34701. SMSs are charged at two rand. Now, I want to talk about um, these uh, five principles and uh, the thinking that uh, when faced with a problem like service delivery, you throw resources at it, money. It is more money that will deal with this particular problem in order to deliver these services. It is skilled management that will be able to deal with uh, the disbursement of this money. And I want to talk about where the lean management system comes into play with regards to these conceptions. But before we go there, let's take Anonymous in the Western Cape. Good evening to you, Anonymous. Good evening, Mr. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm very well, thank you, sir. I'm fine, man. Ma'am, I'm listening, you know. Oh, your line is absolutely terrible, Anonymous. I'm going to ask you to switch off your radio. I, th uh, I think it's the radio that's actually giving us this feedback. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, I've been Must listening, be. you know, you know, talking about the linear management forum, the, the whole principle of how it works, you know, in in public health, you know, and um, I'm in the Western Cape right now, but initially I'm from the Eastern Cape, mm. and, you know, I've, I've just been looking at the, yesterday I was watching TV, looking, I know maybe I might be off topic, looking at the doctors that are, that are on the verge of striking in the Eastern Cape, you know, because of their salaries not being paid, dating back from... Uh, December 2011, mm. you know, mm. and I'm just wondering to myself, you know, we can talk about all these principles and everything, and then it boils down to one thing. If our, you know, our government and our province, you know, the Eastern Cape does not take uh, the mandate of the doctors seriously, whatever we discuss on air, you know, whatever we say, it boils down to nothing, because if you don't pay doctors, they're not going to go to work. The Absolutely. whole healthcare system crumbles. The NHI has started. 
to to I mean, you ask yourself, you know, for, for what if you know the government fails the most basic thing to do to pay a doctor for the job he has done? You know, maybe if you can just you know make a comment on that, Absolutely. you know, I'll be much happy. You know, thank you so much, anonymous in the Western Cape. Yes, the issue of the doctors in the Eastern Cape is um, uppermost on on most people's minds. Seeing doctors protesting because they have not been paid for months, one has mm. to wonder what is the thinking behind that. But again, it goes back to throw resources at the problem. Here's money. Clearly, there's no money to pay the doctors. Give us more money in the budget and we will pay the doctors. Okay, so money does not solve all our problems. Yes, we do need the basic budget to uh, to allocate resources. But before you start uh, throwing money at the problem, rather have a look at whether there's waste there. And quite often you find that you can get 30, 40, sometimes even 50% elimination of waste. In other words, somebody who's working an eight-hour day is actually spending two, three, maybe four hours a day processing waste. So let's eliminate that waste before we throw more money at the problem. The issue about the doctors in the Eastern Cape, clearly there's a problem with the payment process. Somewhere there's a blockage in the flow. And what I obviously don't know the specific circumstances there, but an investigation into that process to pay the doctors will show where that blockage is and we can remove the blockage and get the money flowing back to the doctors. But we're talking about a situation that has been prevalent for a number of months now. If one is not being paid for a number of months, it means that clearly the problem has been identified or you've had enough time Mm. to recognize where the problem is. Why do you think that this problem is not being dealt with speedily in order to ensure that doctors go back to taking care of the ill? Um, I can't speak about the specific situation. I haven't been there to Mm -hmm. investigate it. But what I can say in general is that if people knew about lean management and they were able to apply the principles properly, I'm pretty sure that that problem can be solved within a relatively short space of time. You mentioned uh, earlier on that uh, in the hospitals that you have implemented the lean system in, um, you you came across things like, uh, you know, the uh, person who signs off is far away from the administrative building. What other challenges did you find in in these hospitals that, that were, you know, that the lean management system immediately addressed? Okay. Let me, let me tell you about one um, situation which I'm sure the Department of Health will not mind me talking about. At Newcastle Hospital, they, we did a workshop where the, one of the projects was to reduce the waiting time of patients waiting for their medication at the outpatient's pharmacy. So the process is that they come in in the morning, they go through, get their file from, ad, from admin, they go to see the doctor, and then the last stop is to get their medication before they go home. And when the team started working, they measured, because measurement is always very important, um, and they found that the average waiting time was around an hour and a half. Now, that's average. That that means that some people may be waiting up to three hours. So then the team from pharmacy applied the principles and practices that we taught them, and during the workshop, within one week, they got the average waiting time down to an hour. Now, that was already a big improvement. Within just a week. Within just a week. But then what's important, and this is one of the big challenges with lean management, I must emphasize that it's not a silver bullet that Mm -hmm. will cure things easily, is that you need to sustain those practices through time. And also, you need to improve on it. So what then happened is because the people in the pharmacy were measuring, they noticed at some point that the waiting times were going up again, and so they did a second improvement project. And they managed to get the waiting time there down to 15 minutes when I last spoke to them. From an hour, 30 minutes. Correct. Uh, three hours sometimes for Correct. some. <clears throat> and no more queues and no more filled seats in the afternoon. And the patients were, were really impressed. So I, I must say that um, I, the, the staff and the management from Newcastle Hospital have to be congratulated because they persevered. I, I'm talking about a process that took months, but they eventually got there. How do you get the buy-in of staff and management? I want to talk about this when we come back. Dr. Anton Gritter from Lean Institute Africa joining us in the studio, talking about the lean management system and how it can be applied in government departments and our provincial hospitals. The talk shop.
This is the talk shop with me, Masa Chaba on SAFM 104 to 107. We're talking about the lean management system with uh, Dr. Anton Gruter from Lean Institute Africa. And we're looking at how it can assist in some of the problems that uh, government departments are facing that impede service delivery and thus bring about the public service delivery protests that uh, seem to be never ending. 0891-104-207 is the number to dial if you want to join our discussion. 0891-104-207 or SMS 34701. SMS number is 34701 and SMSs are charged at two rand. Good evening to you, Mkolisi and Bloemfontein and welcome. Hi, Mastawa. Hi, Mkolisi. Yes. Uh, <coughs> well, you know what? I, I believe that there's no uh, amount of uh, systems or number of systems that can actually be, can be brought in an environment that is not enabled to deal with those kind of systems. What so do you I mean think, not enabled? Yeah, you, you should first create an enabling environment for any system to be able to function. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, you cannot you cannot bring a system where, for instance, number one, there are no people. You know, the, the human resource does not is non-existent. That should actually carry out the function. Mm-hmm. Uh, most government departments, uh, you find that uh, the, the whole question of vacancies, you know, it's actually making it difficult for, for government departments to deliver on their mandates. You know, they, they go out to the hutas, you know, lengthy processes of, you know, uh, deliberating on the structures that would be needed to, to carry out whatever mandate. But when they come back, you know, those those those, 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 those uh, uh, decisions are not fully implemented. You find that the the, the organogram of the of the organisation uh, is never addressed, and the, the work has to be done. The mm-hmm. people who have to do the work are not there. You see. Mm-hmm. So even if you bring in a system, you know, mm-hmm. it, it it won't assist because within within government system, because the system itself, the government system itself is corrupt by design. Absolutely. There are people who will always make sure that. You know, the, the necessary resources are not being actually um, uh, 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 acquired sufficiently. Mm-hmm. And that's buy-in, and that's why I was talking about uh, the necessary buy-in, Mkulisi in Bloom. Thank you so much for the call. The buy-in of the staff, the buy-in of management, because you cannot implement the system if the management, if the staff itself are not interested, if they have no inclination whatsoever to see an improvement in the quality of service that they are delivering to the public and of course as you rightly mentioned mm. the shortage of medical personnel how is that um, brought into play with regards to the system thank you so so much Mkolisi. Anonymous in Durban good evening to you and welcome good evening madam how are you? I'm very well thank you sir I'm well um, Mkolisi covered uh, some points that I was going to cover mm-hmm with regard to the management and the people's uh, commitment within the mm-hmm. organization mm-hmm. itself. Okay, all right. So you're also concerned about that with regards to attitudes of staff. How do we change that? If they're not willing, you can't implement something like this. Yes. Um, if I were to give you an example of um, one of the gentlemen in the U.S., uh, Jack Walsh, I'm sure Mr. knows very well who Jack Walsh is. Mm-hmm. Uh, the leader of uh, General Electric. Electric, yes. Um, when he adopted uh, Six Sigma in 1996, uh, he was willing and very passionate about uh, improvement within his company. And what happened is that um, he invested a lot in time and finance. Um, he spent a lot of money in implementing the system within his company. And for a typical uh, manager, especially in South Africa, because we are quite um, negative when it comes to the issues of finance. Mm -hmm. Issues that involve finance were very, very negative with with it. And then, um, how do I put this? Uh, Like, Mm. um, Mm. for for, for the change to be there, Mm. you need need somebody to, to, to... Put the the commitment through. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's the first time to, that's why I'm starting. Start no, up. don't worry, anonymous. We absolutely <laughs> get your yeah, point. and then what absolutely. happened is that General Electric, after two years, they managed to save two to 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 two billion uh, US dollars. 
because of the system that was implemented. Um, you need uh, extensive training when it comes to that, your value stream mapping, your 5S approach, your TQM methodology, mm-hmm. and then the, the likes of the TPM methodology. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Anonymous in Durban um, uh, talking about uh, the example of General Electric. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Dr. Anton Grutter to talk about uh, the example of New United Motor Manufacturing uh, Plant with uh, John Shook because uh, that is a situation where personnel were seen as uh, the problem. Staff were seen as uh, problematic, weren't interested, going on strike all the time, um, not wanting to work productively. So we'll talk about that as well. Let's talk First of all, talk about uh, the issues that were raised, Dr. Grutter, by Umgolisi, um, that, you know, the, the, the shortage of medical personnel must make it very, very difficult to bring about any kind of change when people are overworked and there are vacancies that are not being filled. Okay. Clearly, when you have an absolute shortage of staff, there, there is a resource problem. But what you again, what you find is that many times that the time of the doctors and the other professionals in the public sector is wasted with work that is not actually creating value for the customer. So you eliminate that waste and they've got more time to service the customer. And often that can make a big difference. You mentioned the example when you called last time about doctors who are actually walking to the labs to take blood samples to the labs. And this is obviously taking up much, much needed time that could be spent with patients. Correct, correct. And let's talk about the issue of staff motivation. Um, We often arrive at an organization, and let me just say that it's not just public sector. And the staff are quite skeptical. You know, here comes someone else who thinks they know better than us how to do the work. When they discover that... The, the, they, their suggestions are taken seriously as long as we go through a systematic problem solving and process improvement uh, process and, and they often come up with ideas that they've been wanting to implement for years and now for the first time they get the chance it's amazing how their attitude can change so th- what I've learned over the years is that people come to work wanting to do a good day's work They get frustrated because they're in a dysfunctional system and then their attitude goes negative. So give them the chance and the systematic method to do better and motivation and morale improves as a side effect. I want to talk about the perception that we have of our civil civil servants. Um, you know, the whole thinking that uh, they don't come to work thinking that they want to deliver a good day's work, that they have, you know, um, it's all about the attitude, the negative attitude that they have, the, the, the for whatever reason, not being willing to assist. I, I think those need to be addressed because that is a perception that we have with regards to the people that we'll find at our hospitals, the people that we'll find at government offices. Mm. And how true is this in terms of the work that you've done. But before we even go there, I mean, I'm looking at SMSs coming in. Here's one that says the apartheid government paid every hour worked. The ANC government does not pay doctors, teachers, police nurses. Uh, uh, they do not fill vacancies, etc., for months on end. Another SMS, this one from Tony in Cape Town, saying we must get rid of those people that do not want to work and look at a better incentive system. Are civil servants not willing to work? Imagine you go to work every day and you're not able to do what you want to do because things are not working. What you're expected to do. Exactly. Um, Maybe the power is failing. Maybe the computers don't work. Um, Those kinds of frustrations do build up. And yes, people then do have negative attitudes. But the point here is it's possible to change that. However, we must be careful. If you go to somebody and you say to them your attitude is negative and you need to change, Do you think that's going to help improve morale? No, obviously not. (laughs) Okay. So put put the possibility in their hands that they can improve their own work. In other words, they don't just come to work as a pair of hands, but you enable them to use their brains and apply that and give them the opportunity. Because remember, frontline staff are not often given the opportunity. And it's just amazing what can happen.
All right. So make them feel like they have a part to play, a very important part to play. Like uh, Dr. Gruta says, listen, listen when staff talks to you. Justice in the Eastern Cape, I'm going to take your call just now. I wanted to talk about issues of finance management, management that is able to deal with the finances. We constantly hear of money being spent uh, recklessly in our public health system. Um, How do we deal with that particular problem? And where does the lean management system come in there, but before that, Justice Hyde. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm very well, thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hi to the doctor in studio as well. Ma'am, uh, the, the, the caller who just called earlier on, you know, I think the whole system, by, you know, by design, it's, it's a faulty system. Uh, why do I say that, number one? The, 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 the posts at our, most of our, you know, government institutions, you know, whether it be it hospitals, you know, offices, most of them, they are deployment posts. So you find that just because someone is a comrade, knows nothing about the job, because, you know, they belong to whatever organization they belong to, somehow they land a post. Now, you know, the whole issue of now of employees having attitude, I think somewhere, somehow, it stems from that. Now, what happens is now, from these institutions, the attenders that come out, his friends benefit. So, some, you know, there's a caller who made a call, a very interesting point somehow, you know, earlier on, to say that somehow someone will always find a way to hinder whatever progress. You know, this is a good, you know, the lean, this system is a very, very good one. For instance, you made an example in the hospital in, in Newcastle, mm. where patients were waiting, you know, mm. lesser hours to get their medication. I mean, they have to, some of them, you know, they're in rural hospitals, they have to go far, get transport, you mm. know, it's a good thing. But mm. someone, somehow, because, for instance, in a hospital, uh, I cannot mention, someone who's running it knows nothing about management, but because they belong to a particular organization which is in power, uh, somehow they lend a job. Now, how do you expect people now who are working there to, you know, to ever support anything, you know? Somehow, somehow, whoever is an employee, if they don't want the person to charge, because maybe the person is not qualified, they will do whatever they can to hinder the system, you know? Okay. So Justice. I think that's number one way we need to start. Our government needs it needs an, an overall of a whole of the whole system. They should put people who are qualified for the jobs in charge. This thing of deploying comrades who know nothing mm-hmm. uh, is, you know, is crippling our whole system, you know? Justice, thank you very much. Justice in the Eastern Cape. The issue of political appointees, this comes up all the time. People who don't have the finance management, who don't have the skills to be managing the resources, the personnel that they deal with on a daily basis. Um, how do we? How, how does the lean management system answer that particular challenge? All right. Um, I'm not qualified to comment on that because I don't work in politics. But what I can say is this, that... Um, Lean management is a very different way of managing from traditional management. And in the sense that people don't know about it, in that sense they are maybe not as well qualified to manage the process as others. So what I would like to encourage the listeners and managers out there is to go onto the internet. There are huge amounts of information about lean management in administration, in the public sector, and go and find out for yourself. And you will, that will be a place where you can start improving yourself as a manager and also your staff to deliver better public service. But can the lean management system be implemented in a situation that is not enabling, as was said earlier on, in a situation where your manager does not know the basics? I mean, this is one of the challenges yeah. of uh, a lot of municipalities where you find that uh, you've got uh, you know, um, people appointed in, in positions mm-hmm. of authority, people who are meant to be signing off and making decisions around money and how it's spent, and they, they're not equipped to be able to do that. So can one implement the lean management system in a, system, in, in a situation where the managers themselves need to be skilled first about the basics of what, what it is that they're doing. Okay, so once again, there's specific skills mm-hmm. that you need to know if, if you're um, doing a professional service. So job skills is not the same as lean management skills. Lean management skills are generic. Okay. They can be applied anywhere. Um, but they're an add-on they're an, to the I, job skills. To the basic job okay. skills. All right. And um, the issue that uh, um, was raised, Anonymous in Durban, issues of finance management. Um, does lean uh, management system delve into that? Once again, any process can be improved using these techniques. Now, I must emphasize that I've only given you a very small part of the whole mm-hmm. lean management system. Mm-hmm. So please go and inform yourself if you want to know more about this. 
There are lots of websites. You can go to our website at www.lean.org.za um, and and take this opportunity to inform yourself. I really want to get uh, John Shook's story. But before we go, oh, Mario's, uh, we've lost Mario. So tell us about John Shook's story because that is absolutely amazing in terms yes. of the situation that he found, the attitude mm. and, and the turnaround. Okay. Um, John Shook um, told us about the, the Numi experience. It was a, a joint venture between GM and Toyota. Toyota wanted to get into America, and GM realized they need to improve their productivity, so the, the two competitors got together. Now, the point about it is that this particular factory was the worst factory in the GM stable in terms of productivity and lots of industrial action, etc. So when they brought the lean system in, the same workers were re-employed. And the very same workers, once they realized that the, the, the potential to improve their work was placed in their own hands, provided they systematically used the correct techniques, they then changed their attitudes. And Numi became the best performing factory in the group at the time. So it's, it's living proof that this system can not only improve morale, but also productivity. And these were employees who were said to be uh, have a reputation for frequently going out on strikes. They were forever filling grievance forms um, and even sabotaging quality of the output. And uh, absenteeism routinely ran over 20%. Mm. But uh, John Shook turned this around. Well, look, John um, is, a, is a great guy. He's the CEO of the Lean Global Network to, to whom we below, belong. And he didn't do it single-handedly Absolutely. by himself. The, the real point is that he implemented the Lean Management System together with his colleagues. And, um, and that's essentially what, over time, turned the, the situation around at NUMI. Read up on it. It's uh, the website is lean.org.za. Lean.org.za, and you can read up on the lean management system. Thank you so much to Dr. Anton Gruter from Lean Institute South Africa. Really appreciate your time, Doctor. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the Man Up campaign on our mentors feature with the founder of Dreamworld Leadership Academy, Ntlantlazweni. Hi, I'm Michelle Constant. On the Lifestyle Show, we talk food cars, environment, technology, weddings, and even the occasional divorce. So, why don't you join me every Saturday morning between 9 and 12 here on SAFM 104 to 104 to 107, 104 to 107, 104 to 107.